Welcome everyone. So today we're going to have a really cool tutorial because we are going to create this scatter plot that you see on your screen with a range slider. If you're new to this video, you're new to this channel, please subscribe below so on a weekly basis you can get more plots, more graphs, more cool interactive data analysis tools, and an opportunity to learn about Dash by Plotly. Also, I would recommend, in order to follow along with this video and um, learn the best that you can, I would recommend opening, under the description, opening uh, the links uh, so you can follow along with me. And also, there's at the very bottom of the description an opportunity, an opportunity to skip to certain parts of the video. If you want to repeat something or you found a certain section very interesting, feel free to click on that um, minute uh, blue link below. The description. Okay, so we're going to create this scatter plot with countries as marks and hover data. The y axis is going to be the GDP per capita, the x axis is going to be the suicide rate per country, and a range or slider as part of the dash components that will um, play around with the different years. Average suicide rate. Um, per country from 1985 to 1991 or to 1994 and so on and so on we can play around with this so this is a really cool um, data visualization uh, application and now we're going to jump into um, the data that we're using and see how we're going to code it okay so the data that we're using is going to be data that I downloaded from the web and it has uh, the country, the year, the sex. We're going to use focus on these columns. We're going to use the country. We're going to use the year column, the column G, the suicide column, suicide per 100,000 people, and GDP per capita. Feel free to obviously download this at the link below the description so you can follow along. All right, so let's go into the code. These are the libraries you want to uh, import, and these are the versions that I'm using in case something doesn't work. Just make sure that you have the correct version, uh, but it should work with uh, different versions as well, as they are very similar. As always, um, data frame. I'm going to read the CVS, CSV Excel sheet into, the, into a data frame. I'm going to use these marks below in the range slider, so you don't have to uh, really worry about them right now. Execute, start the app, sorry, start the app here. And then we're going to go into the layout. This first section is the title. I'm just giving it, uh, I'm putting it in the center, giving it a font size. And this is a title, as you saw on the web page. This is the graph. This section is going to be the dash component graph. There's nothing in there yet, according to this code, but soon we'll put the scatter plot in there. And then we'll go into the range slider in order to finish the layout. So the range slider has different properties. We're going to use these properties, but let's look into the documentation and see what these mean. So this is in the link below the video description. At first, you have several examples of how to create range sli sliders. Like this, like this. And then you want to go all the way to the bottom and you can see the references, where you can see the different um, properties. So we're going to use ID, because every component needs an ID that we can refer to at the end. Um, we're going to use marks, I think, minimum, maximum, and all that. So obviously, go back and forth while I'm going through the code. Just pause and, and read more about these to see what they mean, because I'm not going to jump back and forth between the, the documentation and the code, so as not to drive you crazy. All right, so the idea of my range slider is going to be the year. So I remember uh, this is the range slider. Um, a minimum value for the year is going to be 1985 because I know the Excel sheet starts from 1985 and the maximum is 2016. If I wanted only to go up to 2010, I will put here 2010. The value, I'm going to have, they call this, I'm going to put two values because I'm going to say it's going to be one handle, 1985 and 1988. If I added more values here, I would have um, separate handles in the rain slider timeline. You can play around with it, put different dates, um, add more values to it, and you'll see what happens. But if you just put these two, this is a default that um, comes up when the page loads. Right here, let's see, 1985, 1988. 
between this one and this one. All right. Marks. Now we're going to use the mark values that we uh, defined above. The mark values are, and look at the documentation, uh, the marks are a dictionary of um, keys and values. Uh, the keys is what uh, what uh, the data is, 1985, the, the integers, and then what then you have to put a string of that value. You have to put one integer, and then the value will be a string. And that's how you get these numbers here below. All right. <clears throat> so we're going to put the mark values, and then we're going to put step none. Step none means that I am not allowing the um, rain slider to step in between the dates. Let's go back and see. Here we have 1985 and 1998. Now, there are, obviously on the code, on the Excel sheet, there is 1986 and there is a 1987, but I put step none because I don't want that, op that possibility for the user to jump in between those dates. I don't want too many dates. I just want um, the steps to be of increments of, of, of three, which we defined in the mark values. So I just put step none. So in between these two or in between these two, there's no, not going to be an opportunity to, to, for the user to, to jump in between them. The next step will be just the next value, 1994. If I took this out, then you could jump in between the two dates. Then I'm just styling, so it's not taking up the whole page, and I'm done with the layout. All right, so let's go into the callback. The callback is really where you um, obviously uh, connect between what the user is choosing on the range slider and the graph. So I'm saying take, take the year, the component ID, the year, which is the range slider. Remember right here, the year. Take its value that will be influenced by the user's choice. And with this information, build a figure into the graph component. All right, the figure, the graph component is right here. So in this div, in this section of the um, web page, we're going to build a figure. All right, so to connect between the data chosen and the figure, we're going to have to uh, create a function and define it. So I call it def uh, define uh, def update graph. And as always, as you know from the first, if you've watched the first two videos, the pie chart and the bar chart, uh, the only thing that goes, the argument that goes in here is the input, the value of the input, or at least the, uh, oh yeah, the value of the input. So since we have only one input, we're going to have only one argument. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it years chosen, just so I helps me remember what I'm going to do. So whatever the user chooses as the value of the, the rain slider, 1998, 1995, whatever they, however they play around with this, these values are going to go into here. But I didn't really know what this actually means. Is it one value? Is it two values? Is it a string? Is it a, is it a list? So before I actually play around and filter the database, what will be helpful is to print. I would recommend doing this always so you know what kind of data you're playing around with. So I'm going to print on the screen here below and see what the user is choosing. Bring this up a little bit. All right. Save this. And let's see what we come up with when I choose. Automatically, when the page starts, it's going to choose 1985, 1988, because that's what we, um, we set it to be by default. So it's supposed to print something. Let's see what it prints. Let me make this bigger. Let's refresh the page and see what it prints. So now I just activated the, the callback and it's printing 1985, 1988, because these are the default values that we chose, 1985, 1988. So we know that whatever the user chooses is going to come out as a list of two integers. And that's very important to remember because that now you're going to use this to play around with the, to filter the data frame. All right. So I know that by default, the user has chosen, or as the user uh, updated, the, uploaded the page, we got these two, two years. Now, what I want to do is I want to filter the, the rows of the data frame so I get the average of um, suicide rates only for rows between 
the years of 1985 to 1988. So before I even filter average and, and play around with all that, I'm going to actually filter the years. So this is what I'm doing. This is how I'm doing it here. I'm saying, give me a copy of the, of the original data frame where the year is bigger or equal to the years chosen, which is actually the list here below, right? But the first value of it, the first value in the list. So the first value in the list is 1985. And as well, give me rows that have the year. The year column is smaller than or equal to the second value of the list. And the second value of the list is 1988. So in other words, it's just like saying, filter the data frame rows where the column year values are bigger or equal to 1985 and smaller or equal to 1988. I don't want more than that. Only those years because that's what the range slider is showing. All right, so now that I have the filter data frame, I want to make sure that I'm showing the average of suicide rates. So let's look at the data again. In order to do this, we see that the data for every year, look at Albania here in 1987, there's not one GDP per capita. There is, seven, there is about 12 rows of the same GDP per capita with different suicide rates. Why? Because we have different uh, age groups and different genders. So I don't want to see all this. I just want the average for all the genders and all the age groups, uh, which means all of this for the year 1987. I just want the average of all of this. I don't want all these numbers because I just, I'm doing it by, by year. In 1987, I need one value to come out of here, which is this average. So to do that, you write this line of code right here. You're going to group by country, and you're going to say index false because you don't want the country column to be an index. You want the index to stay the same, one, two, three, whatever that is. And then you want to take the next two rows in the data frame, just suicide rate and GDP per capita, and just calculate their average. So what ends up, what you end up having, I, I had to do this a couple of times to make sure I'm doing this correctly, and. I'm printing. Let's print. One second, let me close this. I'm going to print this so we see what we come up with. Once I know what we come up with, it'll be easier for me to populate the and create the scatter figure. All right, let's do this again. Reload. And I think for it to actually activate the callback, we have to refresh the page. The callback is automatically activated. I'm going to go back and let's see what that filter of group by gave me. So it's giving me a country Albania with a suicide rate and a GDP per capita. I, I'm only asking for the first three rows right here, so that's why I only have three rows. So you see, it's actually giving me um, the relevant information, only one row per, per country. And that's what I really need, one row per country. So now we can move forward and create the scatter plot. So we're going to call uh, Plotly Express and we're going to um, uh, create here the scatter plot. We're going to say the data frame is our, our data frame, the copy of the filter data frame. Uh, the x axis is going to be the suicide rate, well, the average of the suicide rate that we created above, the GDP. Hover data is going to be the country. Um, the text is going to be. Uh, the country as well, and that's going to refer to this, the text over each mark. And the height, this is the height of the scatter plot. I want it to be 550 pixels because I want it to fit the whole page. So these are, again, just some components. You can go into, sorry, properties. You can go into the Plotly Express scatter, which is the link below the video, and you can see in the scatter plot that there's many more um, parameters that can be used. You can use the uh, size of the mark. You can use um, facet if you want to see on different rows or different columns, uh, different graphs, uh, animation, and color schemes, and all that. So there's we don't need most of this here. I'm just using several of them for this tutorial uh, to create my, my graph. Okay. Um, and this last line below is just saying that the text position of the country, I want it instead of to be by default right over the mark, 
I want it to be the top center, right above the mark. All right, so I created my scatter plot um, variable, and I'm updating the traces, and now I'm returning this. Remember, whatever you return is in the function of a callback is actually the output, or the value of the output, which right here is the figure. So I'm returning this scatter plot into that output of the graph, which is right here in this uh, section of the page. So let us see. Let's do it again. Let us see the result. Loading. All right. Okay, so there you have it. You have the suicide rates from 1985 to 2016. This is calculating the average rates from 1985 to 1988. So for those three years, it's calculating the average suicide rate per 100,000, a population of 100,000 for each country. So you can see the Sri Lanka has a suicide rate of 45.3 for these three years. But if you take the next, say from 1985 to 1991, for six years, Hungary suddenly has really had um, an increase in suicide rates, and that's 47 compared to Sri Lanka, which is in second place between 1985 to 1991. Uh, not a very good second place. They can place in suicide rates, um, but still second place. And if we want to, we can go all the way to 2016, and we can see in the last 30 years or 31 years, the average suicide rate, the highest was for Lith Lithuania. Sri Lanka and Russian Federation and Hungary. Now this is an average over 30 years. Remember each row is one country. But we can say I don't want to see all 30s. I just want to see 2016 which is also okay. Right that. And we see that Lithuania was the highest in 2016 and Croatia was also uh, high up there around 20 something. There you go. All right so there you go. Um, I hope you, you learned a lot from this. I hope you enjoyed it. It's really interesting data. It's, it's uh, real life data. So I find it very cool. Um, if you want to learn more, please don't forget to subscribe below because on a weekly basis I try and upload a new, a new plot, a new uh, component for DAS so you can learn how to do other things like a rain slider or a drop down or, or a checkbox. Uh, but only if you subscribe below will you get an opportunity or a notification that a new video has come out. Um, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a good day.